In this week's program, we're visiting with fisheries management section leader Scott Gangel to talk about statewide fall fish reproduction surveys on our lakes and rivers. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. So as, as part of our management of our fisheries around the state, our biologists do two important sampling events every year. In the summertime, they sample adult fish. Uh, and then in the fall, we kind of switch gears and sample small fish. And so we literally switch gears. The gears that we're using in the fall at this time of the year are, are small mesh gears that are just designed to sample very small fish. You know, we're talking young of the year fish, fish that were stocked this year, fish that were spawned this year, you know, from natural reproduction. What we're trying to do is assess how good the survival was on those fish. We can assess based on the number and sizes of fish that we catch in the fall, whether they had good natural reproduction or good stocking success in, in our lakes around the state. Our gill nets aren't you know, species specific, but they do tend to catch some fish better than others. So if we're using gill nets, say, we're, we're pretty much targeting things like walleye or perch or, or small fish that are, that are shaped kind of like a walleye or a perch. And so if we're using the trap nets that we set along the shorelines, there we're getting more of the, uh, the forage base, some of the fathead minnows, bluegills, crappies, the sunfish type fish, and things that aren't normally caught in gill nets. So we use a combination of different gears to sample the various fish that are in uh, all of our lakes because our lakes aren't all you know, the same. And then we also use some electrofishing where we have a, a boat that is set up to put an electrical charge in the water, it shocks the fish, stuns them temporarily, where we can dip them out of the water and, and, and then let them go after they recover. On most years, we'll see a pattern set up where it's, you know, statewide, you know, conditions were really good or conditions were really bad, but this year it seems like things are kind of all over the board. We're not seeing any real consistent patterns with reproduction this year. Some of our, some of our walleye lakes have been, have been good, some have been bad. Um, what we're seeing is probably a lot of the, the, the simpler fish communities, like our newer lakes that just have maybe walleye and maybe some perch in them. They seem to have done pretty well this year um, in terms of, of stocking success, or in a few cases we've seen some natural reproduction, but we're not seeing that consistently across the state. The same thing goes for, for just about every other species too. You know, we're seeing some panfish reproduction, but not great. We're seeing some uh, yellow perch production in some places, but not everywhere. So it's been kind of hit and miss this year, but uh, the good news is, is, is 2023 was a really good year across the state. That was one of those years that we did see a pattern and it was you know, really consistent, really good reproduction and stocking success across the state. And so what you typically do find is when you have a good year class one year, the next year is a little bit more suppressed. And so we're not too concerned about any of the lakes that didn't do well this year. We're just, um, you know, it's just part of the cycle where we had good reproduction in stocking last year. You know, Devil's Lake, they did see a pretty good catch of young walleye this year. And Devil's Lake, we, we manage that through um, it's both natural reproduction and stocking. We don't stock a lot of fish in Devil's Lake. We, we stock walleye typically on the eastern part of the lake. The water over there is a little bit more saline or salty and, and we don't see a lot of reproduction over there. The western part of Devil's Lake, we do see pretty good natural reproduction at times and so it's kind of managed as a, as a combination. We try to augment the, the, the portions of the lake and the bays of the lake on the east that, that don't see a lot of reproduction and try to establish a good walleye fishery there. And so what they saw was a, was a pretty good catch of walleye, probably a little bit above average over the long term. And so that one looks pretty good. Um, they didn't see much for, for perch numbers, but they saw a fair young of the year white bass numbers. So it looks like a, like a pretty good year for walleye in Devil's Lake, not so much for perch. Lake Sakakawea is an interesting one because um, they saw not good numbers of, of, of young walleye, but they saw walleye throughout the reservoir of age zeros. That's interesting because we didn't stock Lake Sakakawea with walleye this year, and so that's all natural reproduction. We didn't stock it this year because we've had a few good years of reproduction, and, and again, when, once you start seeing those young year classes building up in numbers, we want to kind of take a, take a year off every now and then and let, let the forage base kind of catch up and make sure that we're not overstocking the lake and making sure that there's enough food for everything to continue to grow and survive. And so we saw pretty good um, 
reproduction on Sakakawea this year, um, considering. And they also saw some young of the year sauger throughout the lake. Uh, two years ago, we had a pretty good sauger year class, and we're starting to see those fish grow up into, you know, uh, older age groups, so we know that they survived. Uh, so they saw a few sauger this year as well, and, that, and that's looking pretty good. Otherwise, numbers of fish aren't particularly, um, aren't particularly good uh, for reproduction throughout the lake. Other fish species, you know, were nothing remarkable out there. But the walleye was, was probably the one thing that stood out. Lake Oahe looks like it had another good reproductive event for walleye. I don't know if it's going to be a strong year class, but recall that we've had multiple good reproduction events over the last few years. And we've seen a, a stockpiling of small fish on Lake Oahe, so we didn't really want more reproduction on Lake Oahe, but we did see some, some fairly good reproduction again this year. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to see how that survives and, and grows into the adult population. Uh, the thing about Lake Oahe is we just sample from our portion of Lake Oahe down to the state line, so I'm not sure what they saw in South Dakota, if that's a trend throughout the reservoir, or if that's just something that we saw on the upper end of the reservoir. The other thing that we did see on Lake Oahe, probably a, a little bit of a brighter spot, was the forage base. Um, we have a lot of different forages on Lake Oahe, and we look at things like emerald shiners, young of the year crappie, young of the year white bass, anything smaller than six inches could be could be a meal for a, for a walleye or a pike or, or, or a catfish or any game fish down there. We didn't see particularly good numbers of most of those alternate forages, but we did see some gizzard shad reproduction this year, which is good because that was a, a primary forage base. When we get some cold weather, they don't really survive the winters very well, but as you have a mild winter like we did last winter, we see the adults survive, they can reproduce, and those young gizzard shad provide really good forage for, for game fish down there. If we have a couple more decent winters where they can survive, we might see some, some buildup of, of forage on Oahe again this year. We do have a, a priority system on our lakes. We, we sample some of our high priority lakes every year. We try to get to those all, all the time. And then we also have the majority of our lakes in our, across the state are, are, are not in that high priority. You know, they're not the Lake Sakakawe or Devil's Lake or, or Lake Oahe. What we're seeing on those is, is the guys will pick and choose if they have a new lake and they want to see how well the stocking did there, they might go to that lake. If they have another lake that, that um, hasn't had any reproduction for a while or something that hasn't had a survey, they might sample them every other year, things like that, but we don't get to everyone. We, we don't get to all the lakes that we do our, our adult population sampling on either. It's just more of a, you know, an index that gives us information um, to help us manage these lakes. And what we really get from this information is you know, like the, the stocking success, the, the reproductive success, the forage base, because we are sampling small fish. And all of that factors in this winter when the guys are looking at their lakes and making their stocking requests, deciding what to stock where. This will tell us a little bit about, you know, where we've seen su success this year, where we might need to add a few more fish next year, or where we might need to uh, rein it in a little bit and maybe not stock so many if the forage base isn't looking good and stuff. So this is really important information to, to get in the fall right before we go into winter and we're making those management decisions for a lot of our lakes.